Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, latest on a shooting. Firefighters calling for help after finding a victim at a West Side fire station. Plus, breakdown of President-elect Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus plan and how it is expected to help Americans. Also going to check on traffic coming up. And outside with live cam, we made it to Friday. We'll see how the weekend is looking. It is cool out there yet again this morning. Good morning to you. It is Friday, January 15th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Not too bad this morning. Yeah, 47 degrees. So what, about 10 degrees warmer than this time yesterday? Uh, or approximately. However, it's going to continue to get colder because it depends on where you live. Mm -hmm. uh, folks in the Hill Country are below freezing right now. Really? Oh, yeah, wow. and we had that windy conditions yesterday. You said your house was actually just kind of rattling. Oh, yeah, it just shook. Yeah, it was. I mean, we had some gusts uh, 35 miles per hour mm -hmm. at least. It's going to be breezy again today. Still got a fairly decent, uh, you know, for this time of the morning, fairly decent breeze. Winds about uh, 15 miles per hour. So no problems in this picture. And then again, look Look at these temperatures 29 Kerrville 46 here in town 45 Lotus we uh, just about an hour hour and a half ago we we're up to 50 we're still at 50 I should say and so this cooler air is going to continue to come on in here we have got clear skies very dry air but the windy conditions, which usually prevents you from getting as cold as what you could get. But I'm going for uh, upper 30s uh, later on this morning for here in town. So you will need a jacket. And then high temperature of only 60 today. So uh, plenty of sunshine. But again, breezy in the shade. You might want your, uh, your jacket handy. Mountain Cedar, of course, yesterday's reading compared to the previous day went up tenfold. It was only 400 something now 40, almost 4400. This doesn't even take into account. This was before the uh, wind picked up yesterday, so it may give one good last shake to those mountain cedar trees. I know I'm feeling a little bit. A lot of folks are so 38 this morning wind out of the north 10 to 15 miles per hour. It is going to be chilly and very cold in the hill country. And then later on this afternoon, the high temperature up to 60. A mm, couple of degrees below normal and on the windy side. Overall, good looking three day weekend. Details on that coming up and some pretty decent rain chances then next week. Getting ready to hit the road. See your traffic authority, Samuel King. What's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Things are looking uh, mostly okay throughout the area. We do have uh, one slowdown here. Uh, this is at I 10 around Woodlawn. You can see traffic down to 35 miles per hour uh, in that stretch if you're heading into downtown San Antonio. So that's something to watch out for. Also, this late Later today on Loop 410 between Marbach and 90, uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. this week. They're uh, doing some inspection work out there. And here's a look at some travel times this morning. Uh, 26 minutes if you're coming in on 35 from New Braunfels. 24 minutes on 87 from Lavernia this morning. Good morning, you folks out there. And in 25 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. And here's a look at Transguide 281 at Grayson looking fine this morning as well. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. A 43 year old man who was dropped off at a fire station is in critical condition after police say he was shot several times last night. The man was found at the fire station in the 600 block of South Hamilton around 915 last night. Firefighters said the man had been shot multiple times and they notified police. The man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Police say the man was the victim of a shooting they were working on in the 100 block of Apache Street, just south of Culebra and west of I-10 on the city's west side. Officials are still looking for the people who dropped off the victim at the fire station and the suspects involved in this shooting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's a look at the latest Bear County coronavirus cases. 1800 new cases reported in this latest report. 19 new deaths also reported those happening within the last 14 days. The number of COVID-19 patients in our hospitals has gone down for a third day in a row. This morning there are 1,407 COVID-19 patients, 382 in ICU, 231 are on ventilators. Now to President-elect Biden outlining his plan to fight the coronavirus. In addition to billions of dollars for vaccination efforts, Biden is calling for bigger stimulus checks for Americans and the boost in the minimum wage. ABC's Alex Prashe has details. With five days to go before the inauguration, President-elect Biden is unveiling his plan to fight COVID-19. My first appearance before a joint session of Congress, I will lay out my Build Back Better recovery plan. The nearly $2 trillion proposal calls for new $1,400 stimulus payments to most Americans, plus $130 billion to reopen schools and $160 billion to build a national vaccine program and boost testing. Countless families and friends left behind with unrelenting grief and guilt, anger and frustration. And the emptiness felt by the loss of life 
is compounded by the loss of our way of life. It comes as hospitals beg for backup. In Los Angeles County, one in three people now have contracted COVID. Ambulances gridlocked outside the ER. Inside, gurneys one behind another. But at this field hospital, built in just five days, the only thing missing is oxygen. We need a large quantity of oxygen at all times, constantly. We can't ever run out because if we run out, they could die. They could die. The nation's death toll is now approaching 400,000. Last week's toll was 25% higher than at any other time during the pandemic. Amid the crush of patients, a rush to vaccinate. But some cities warn they're running out of doses. We don't have enough supply to go beyond phase one. The shortage forcing some cities to slow the vaccine rollout to lower risk people. And in areas where shots are in stock, appointments are not. There was not one ounce of availability on any site. Alex Perche, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, all is bright along the San Antonio Riverwalk and will be for at least another month. Hundreds of trees and thousands of lights continue to light up the Riverwalk. Our Stephen Cavazos is live there this morning. Now tell us a little bit about how long this will last. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, that is over 200 trees and over 100,000 lights, if you want to be exact. And all of this staying up through Valentine's Day. Now, we're told that this is all in an effort to shut some light following a dark glare. And just take a look behind me. We're still seeing those lights up here along the San Antonio Riverwalk. And Executive Director of the San Antonio Riverwalk Association, Maggie Thompson, tells us that these lights will be up longer than usual. Now, she says they are usually down around this time of year, but because of COVID-19, we're going to be keeping them up a little bit longer. Now, she says that this, uh, they hope by extending the tradition, that is another month, it will lift up some spirits and bring back smiles following a challenging year. Now, again, the lights will be up through Valentine's Day to lift up those spirits. I know you guys can't see it, but I'm smiling really big under here. And coming up in the next half hour, we'll hear how these lights are boosting businesses right here along the San Antonio Riverwalk. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you very much, Stephen. I saw the lights were still up the other day, and I was like, I wonder since the pandemic and they turned them on earlier this year yes, they did. if they're going to stay on later yeah. and that's exactly what's happening i think it's it's helpful right now i agree <laughs> we could use brighter yep. 437 47 degrees on your friday morning and still head on gmsa a first look at the team who is having to distribute the covid 19 vaccine in alaska by its snowmobile spurs taking on the rockets last night at the at&t center and a collapse at the end we have the low lights next yeah i'm a little sad about that that's okay. Go Spurs go. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. 47 degrees right now. A little milder than yesterday morning. However, we're not going to get too warm today. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. And welcome back. It's 440. President-elect Joe Biden is asking one of his White House nominees to take a side job for his inauguration. Lisa Monaco is Biden's deputy attorney general nominee. He asked her to serve as his inauguration team's homeland security advisor. She would coordinate with security officials on any safety concerns in the days leading up to the inauguration. This as federal authorities warn that domestic extremists could carry out attacks on Biden's inauguration. This position lasts only until inauguration day. Monaco will will then go back to preparing for confirmation hearings as the nominee for the second highest position with the Department of Justice. Federal government has executed a convicted serial killer. Corey Johnson was executed last night, convicted of killing seven people in 1992 as part of the drug trade in Virginia. Johnson argued the court should postpone his execution because he had tested positive for COVID-19. His attorney also unsuccessfully argued Johnson's supposed intellectual disability should exempt him from the death penalty. A 6.2 magnitude earthquake hit Indonesia this morning. Four people are dead and hundreds more injured. Several buildings have been heavily damaged, including the governor's office, a hotel and a hospital. The earthquake occurred about 1.30 in the 1.30 a.m. this morning local time. At this time, no tsunami warning is in effect. DeMar DeRozan back in last night's game against the Spurs and the Rockets, missing the last two games on the road to take care of his father, who's ill in Los Angeles. But it would not be an easy night for our Spurs. Houston's first game without James Harden went better than expected for anyone uh, for the Houston Rockets. Spurs tried to hang on to the lead, but the Rockets rallied to beat the Spurs 109-105 on last night in Houston's first game since trading away the franchise cornerstone. 
Still San Antonio forward Keldon Johnson had a career high 29 points. Lonnie Walker added 16 while tying a career high with four three pointers. DeRozan had 13 points, seven assists, six rebounds. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich reacted to the loss saying to the bet the Spurs that they had four to five guys who were out to lunch, quote to quote, quote unquote. <laughs> Teams meet again tomorrow at the AT&T Center finale of a two game set tip off set for 4 p.m. OK, one more shot. <laughs> out to lunch. Our guys are out I know. To lunch. <laughs> That's great. All right, come back to lunch. Play better tomorrow. Yes, please. Go Spurs go. Time now is 443 and 46 degrees. Up next, a unique story of a team delivering COVID-19 vaccines by snowmobile through harsh conditions in Alaska. And welcome back. It's 445. This morning, a group of healthcare workers in Alaska are racing to deliver the COVID-19 vaccine by snowmobile. ABC's Kana Whitworth has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, we're taking you up close and personal with an all-female team delivering COVID-19 vaccines by snowmobile through the harsh conditions of rural Alaska. If the teams didn't make these trips, some of these people would have no way to get the vaccine. Once they land, villagers drive out to them on snowmobiles. The women load up in a sled and are pulled the rest of the way into the village. In one day, this team traveled hundreds of miles, vaccinating 65 people. In the past month, various teams have made about 30 of these trips. And coming up at 7 a.m., We'll talk live to all four members of this intrepid team and hear the stories of their incredible quest to bring hope to the farthest reaches of our country. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. Still a little early, but uh, this is the time of day we tend to be wrapping up construction on San Antonio's highways and byways. That's true. What should we look out for, Samuel King? Well, things uh, looking uh, fine uh, right now. We have some construction this week on, on 410, and we also have some construction on 281. But let's take a look at the travel times first here. It's eight minutes between uh, 1604 and Belverde Road going northbound, seven minutes southbound, so that looks good. But this weekend, uh, we have this construction uh, later today on 410, which we mentioned earlier. And we also have a uh, trans guide here. This is 35 to Cesar Chavez. What I meant to say uh, was there is going to be some more construction between 1604 uh, and Stone Oak and TPC Parkway this weekend. So there's some closures to look out for, and we'll have more on that later in the newscast, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Things about to get picturesque with Mr. Osterhage. Yeah, this is a great picture. A couple of them actually uh, over the course of the morning show, but uh, yeah, the 360 bridge overlook at Austin, really, really pretty. Great looking suns. I love that. Great Thank shot. you very much. Yeah, and uh, sunrise this morning is going to be spectacular again. Obviously, no glow of the sunshine yet. 46 here in town. However, on the hill country, we've already got uh, temperatures that are down in, below freezing, actually in the upper 20s. And so that cooler air is going to continue to come on in here on wind, which is out of the uh, north right now, north to northwest, about 15 miles per hour. And then the wind is going to be picking up. So yesterday, of course, it was a blustery day when that front started to move on through here. And it's going to be very windy again today and then it's going to die down later on tonight. Not much going on upstairs in the atmosphere as far as any moisture, so we're going to have another beautiful, beautiful day with lots of just intense blue skies out there. It's fantastic. And overall, I mean, if you want to count this part of the weekend, so let's call it a four day weekend, it's going to be pretty good all weekend long. We'll start to see more clouds as we go on into Sunday and then Monday, but still overall very nice. Real nice uh, temperatures, about what you'd expect this time of year all weekend long, maybe a, a little bit milder as we head into Monday. All right, dew point temperatures, of course, measure moisture in the atmosphere, have really dropped down compared to yesterday after that front moved through. Now, it's not, it wasn't this huge blast of cold air that came on in here, but with the drier air that's allowing temperatures to, to drop down, and that colder air is going to continue to filter in here from the north. Now, that's going to last through the weekend. Then we get into first part of next week and the humidity is going to start to come back up. However, the nice thing is it's like if we're going to have some more humidity. Let's try and squeeze it out in the form of rain. And that's definitely the situation as we go into the middle of next week. So computer models all week long, all weekend long. Again, a couple of clouds coming in here, here and there, maybe one or two tomorrow, a couple more on Sunday, a few more on Monday perhaps a couple of showers by late Monday. Um, that'd be after we're done with the day. 
any activities during the day. And then Tuesday, we're going to start off with some uh, showers around here and rain chances are going to be going up as we go in toward uh, the afternoon Tuesday and then overnight into Wednesday. Fairly decent shot of rain, especially those two days, maybe a couple of lingering showers then going into uh, late Wednesday and Thursday. So that would be a beautiful right now. It's looking very encouraging. Obviously still a few days off, but uh, it looks very nice and the timing of it again weekend. Fantastic rain by midweek 55 today at noon. Plenty of sunshine out there and yes, it is definitely going to be on the the windy side 60 for a high temperature a whole lot different than yesterday. Yesterday, of course, we had those we were talking about those southwesterly winds preceding that front and they were down sloping kind of compressed a little bit and that's what shot temperatures up to six or excuse me 74 yesterday weekend. Very nice, roughly normal temperatures, you know, give or take a couple of degrees here and there on either end of the uh, the scale. Uh, we get up into the mid 60s Monday and then mid and upper ish 60s through next week. A little cooler on Wednesday, but right now, like I said, pretty good rain chances for especially Tuesday and Wednesday. Not bad. We need mm -hmm. the rain. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great. We're up for the month of January right now, but you know, going back a month, it's still on the dry side. And then we still have to look forward to February. And if you're new to town, sometimes things get a little dicey around here in February. <laughs> Ice wise, 1996. Ice storm start the month, 100 by the 21st, I think it was, and then oh, an wow. ice storm to finish up the month. Mm, ice mm, mm. Okay, well, yep. maybe. Remember it. Will. Who knows what will happen this year? <laughs> 451, 46 degrees. And still ahead, a highly anticipated Marvel series debuts today on Disney Plus. We're going to have a preview of WandaVision next. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, four, two, Fireball one, daily four, five, zero, two, six, Fireball zero. Cash five, we have four, 14, 22, 33, 34. And your Texas two stop, 21, 23, 26, 29, bonus ball 18. Marvel is back this time on Disney Plus. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Why am I so pretty? Oh. Fans of streaming in for a treat this weekend, several critically acclaimed projects out. The civil rights era film One Night in Miami is the first movie directed by Regina King, focusing on a meeting between Malcolm X, Cassius Clay, Sam Cooke, and Jim Brown. That's on Amazon Prime Video and pairs well with the documentary MLK FBI, which is available for streaming rental. Also for rental, the revenge dramedy Promising Young Woman is out today. The highly anticipated first Marvel series for Disney Plus, WandaVision, is like nothing ever made in the Marvel Universe, star Elizabeth Olsen tells ABC News. I think the DNA through and through in our show is 100% Marvel. Um, I believe the way we are unraveling a story about these two characters is, um, is completely unique and unlike what we're used to. WandaVision, out today on Disney Plus. What's wrong, you scared? <laughs> and on Netflix, Avengers star Anthony Mackie leads the sci-fi action thriller Outside the Wire. In theaters, Liam Neeson stars in the border drama The Marksman. Hollywood, re-embracing Washington, D.C. after four years of President Trump. Lady Gaga will sing the national anthem at Joe Biden's inauguration next week. And Jennifer Lopez will perform. And back to Regina King, a big day for her with the release of her directing debut and a big birthday. She's 50 today. While Mr. Worldwide, Pitbull, is 40. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News. And time now is 456 and 46 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a first look at how security is being ramped up big time in the nation's capital ahead of uh, Joe Biden's inauguration. And Samsung is out with some new Galaxy phones. We're going to take a closer look just ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A heightened state of security in the nation's capital ahead of Joe Biden's inauguration. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. Outside with live cam mid 40s now, Michael, get us updated on the weekend forecast. Talk about a decent chance of rain for next week. Hi, good morning. It's Friday, January 15th. Thanks for joining us. Let's get straight to Mike and see how our Friday is shaping up. We know it's about 46 right now. 
Right, and actually we dropped down a little bit more in the past hour. Temperature is now at 45, and we started off at 50 earlier this morning when I came into work uh, about 3 o'clock. So we've continued to cool down. Some cooler air from the hill country is going to work its way on in here on those northwesterly winds, and it is on the breezy side, especially for this time of the morning. Of course, yesterday I mean, it was like being in a wind tunnel, basically, and it's going to be pretty breezy again today. Also, temperature is a big difference. Yesterday we had that southwesterly wind preceding the front, and that that really uh, that is a downsloping wind. It always heats things up. We got up to 74, 60 today. So we'll actually be a couple of notches below normal. As far as the aquifer is concerned, it did go up one tenth of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens. Now, of course, this reading was taken before the winds picked up yesterday. So I'm speculating it's going to be much higher later on today, but this had jumped 10 times what it was the previous day. Almost 4,400 mold is on the low side. All right, along with some cooler temperatures, especially cold temperatures in the hill country, we've got a wind chill to uh, deal with. Now, actual readings are down in the uh, 20s out in portions of the hill country right now, but we have a wind chill down to 39 based on that 45 degrees. 40 is what it feels like Port SA, and you've got these actual air temperatures up here in the hill country that are below freezing. So it's going to be a nice warm up throughout the day, sunny, windy, but again, we make it up to 60 and that's about it. And with that breeze near in the shadows, might want to keep a jacket handy. And then this weekend, uh, a few more clouds, a cloud, forgot the word few and more. But anyway, we'll see some more clouds uh, later on in the weekend. They'll kind of get a little more, a couple more here and there. Overall, very nice uh, long holiday weekend. And then next week, it is going to start to get warmer, mid 60s and even close to 70. And we've got right now a fairly decent chance for some rain coming in here by the middle of next week. More on that in just a couple of minutes and a closer look at the weekend forecast. Track, tra excuse me, traffic authority. <laughs> I was going to say if you're traveling, Traffic Authority, Samuel King, what's going on, sir? You are traveling right now, Mike. Things uh, looking fine across the area. This is what I meant to say earlier. Uh, some lane closures this weekend on 281 between Stone Oak and 1604, uh, starting overnight Saturday and continuing through uh, Monday morning. So that's something to watch out for there. If you're traveling that way now, 30 minutes if you're coming in on 281 to downtown San Antonio uh, from Belverde, 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie, 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels, 20 minutes on 90 all the way in from Castroville. And here's a look at Transguide right now, 10 at Callahan, looking fine this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Security preparations ahead of Joe Biden's inauguration next week have kicked into high gear in the nation's capital. The FBI says it's tracking online chatter that could pose a threat to the festivities next week. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the nation's capital looking like a fortress. Seven foot fencing topped with razor wire now surrounding the Capitol building. And behind it, some of the 21,000 National Guard members deployed for the inauguration. More American troops in Washington now than in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. Officials also considering keeping crowds out of the National Mall for Biden swearing in and blocking off streets with concrete barriers. It's amazing that one time and then again, it's kind of scary. FBI Director Christopher Wray says the agency is tracking extensive online chatter about potential armed protests. We're looking at individuals who may have an eye towards repeating that same kind of violence that we saw last week. Investigators say so far 80 cases have been charged in federal court and 34 people have been arrested in connection with the riot. The FBI has identified more than 200 suspects. New details now that retired Air Force officer Larry Brock has admitted to being the man seen carrying zip ties during the insurrection. Prosecutors say Brock intended to use the restraints to take hostages and perhaps execute members of the U.S. government. Anybody who plots or attempts violence in the coming week should count on a visit. Meantime, at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, new images of the transition in action, moving trucks at the White House, President Trump's aides seen packing up. Ensure that we have a safe inauguration, uh, that President-elect Joe Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris uh, are sworn in as the new president and vice president of the United States. Uh, in a manner consistent with our history, with our traditions. And during the inauguration, the FBI says it plans to operate round-the-clock command posts at each of its 56 field offices and its headquarters. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Lawmakers just beginning the 87th session of the Texas legislature. They have to craft a budget with declining revenues as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Our Samuel King joins us now. And Samuel, could the budget crunch mean more fees and taxes for drivers? Yeah, that's certainly under, something under consideration. TxDOT, for instance, has seen almost a $2 billion drop in revenue during this budget year alone because of the pandemic. And that has some lawmakers looking for ways to fund the state's transportation needs. And one idea involves the fuel tax. It is among the lowest among the 10 states with the biggest populations, and it hasn't been adjusted in Texas in 30 years. Now, House Transportation Committee Chairman Terry Canellis of Edinburgh says it's time to tie the tax to inflation, the rate of inflation, something that's done in several other states. I'm not a fan of raising taxes. Uh in any form or fashion, but someone's got to pay for the roads we drive on. And so um, the fact is oil and gas industry uh, and those revenues can't shoulder the ever-growing need for infrastructure. And Canellis also says the trucking industry may need to pay more of a fair share. He says they consume far more pavement than they pay for. And we told you last month about some proposed legislation that would require owners of electric vehicles to pay a flat yearly fee, something more than two dozen states have. And Canales says he would also support that idea because those drivers pay far less in fuel taxes. And we'll have more coming up on that in the next hour, guys. Thank you, Samuel. The city of San Antonio says some 100 people who signed up for the COVID-19 workforce recovery program last fall have completed their training. The plan offered training to those who lost their jobs due to COVID and gave them a stipend. Said he says 4,000 people called interested. 3,000 are currently undergoing training or gearing up to do so. A woman who will begin the three month training to become an administrative assistant says the program has been life changing for her. Now's the time to do anything, right? Because if you're just sitting at home, why not take some virtual classes and just, just do it? Just get out there. I mean, the world, the pandemic's here, but the world didn't stop. Your tax dollars in service to your, you and your neighbors um, and making sure that you have the resources to connect to that, that next job and that next career. There are still money, or rather there is still money and spots available for training. A separate but similar plan for the Ready for Work program will begin soon and was approved by voters last fall. Call 311 to sign up or for more information. San Antonio Riverwalk Association hoping to lift spirits during uh, or following a difficult year. The organization will extend the famous holiday lights along the Riverwalk for at least another month. That's where we find our Stephen Cavassos live this morning who tells us how these lights are also giving Riverwalk businesses that extra boost. Good morning, Stephen. Uh, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Now, we know the Riverwalk has been a top attraction for many years, but 2020 was unlike any year. Uh, the businesses here took a major hit because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but the San Antonio Riverwalk Association hopes by keeping these lights up a little bit longer, it will make a big difference. Now, Executive Director for the San Antonio Riverwalk Association, Maggie Thompson, says restaurants here don't have drive through or curbside capability, but she believes things are turning around. She says by keeping these lights up, it will not only lift up spirits, but bring out more people to support local businesses. Thompson says it is important that safety is still a top priority. Now, the Riverwalk is disinfected every night, and she says it's probably the cleanest it's ever been and encourages people to come out and enjoy. So not only is it a beautiful experience, you're outside, you can distance yourself and enjoy the lights right now through Valentine's Day. Now, Thompson says restaurants are going above and beyond to follow CDC guidelines. Now, as she just mentioned, these lights will be up through Valentine's Day, but the overall purpose is to give people that sense of joy that usually comes with the holidays. Now, coming up, we'll have some extra fun facts about these lights, and I'll tell you, if you are big on numbers, we'll have a special treat for you coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Gavasso's KSAT 12 News. Thank Mark you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I like seeing the lights. I don't get to see them when most people see them. Most mm. people see them at night and I right. see them in the morning when I'm jogging uh, like on the weekends, but it's uh, nice. It's nice. So you're up early even on the weekends for your runs. Oh, well, yes. That's the best time to get out. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> time now is 509 and 46 degrees for now. Still ahead, Samsung showing off its latest line of smartphones. Also next, as part of Dream Week in San Antonio, the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum hosting a special historic tour. We're going to have a preview. Outside with live cam, we've now dropped down to 45 degrees. Mike's weekend forecast coming up. 
512 right now is part of the many events held during Dream Week. The San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum will hold a historical tour of East View Cemetery, highlighting notable African Americans in our city. Our Sarah Costa spoke with the director about why taking a look back in time is more important than ever. Everyone has a story. However, Deborah Jarman, the executive director of the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum, says the trailblazing stories of people of color have been historically harder to find. What you'll find with not just African Americans, but people of color in general, is that our stories weren't written. So we have to investigate our stories. It's why SACAM is hosting a tour in Eastview Cemetery on Saturday of local African American historical icons and the impacts they made in the community. What cemeteries do, they give us an opportunity to take a peek at that buried history um, so we can discover more about our ancestors. Each tour will last about 45 minutes here in the south end of the cemetery, where the majority of people who are buried here are African American, some dating back to the early 1920s. They can expect a safe, socially distanced tour. We will have docents and we're going to explore about 11 grave sites of some pretty amazing people. One of those amazing people includes Myra Davis Hemmings. She was one of the founders of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, establishing the local chapter in San Antonio. Hemmings was also a famous actress who starred in many race films when they were popular in the first half of the 20th century. Another notable will be one of the Suttons. We'll go to a couple of their grave sites, but we'll talk about Reverend Alexander Carver Sutton, who George Washington Carver was his godfather. He was the president of the Texas NAACP and also the owner of the Sutton Paradise Funeral Home. Jarman hopes a tour can bring people together and inspire others to make a difference. And when you're walking and you're talking about people that used to live here and what they contributed to San Antonio, what you realize is that you have something to contribute as well. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Tours will take place this Saturday, 11 to 2 p.m. at Eastview Cemetery. The tickets cost $25 and must be bought online before Saturday. You can find the link on KSAT.com. Friday morning, it's now 515, 45 degrees. And still ahead, need a phone upgrade? We're going to give you a first look at Samsung's newest line of smartphones. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In today's Tech Bytes, new Galaxy phones from Samsung. The three new devices range from $800 to $1,200. The less expensive model costs the same as Apple's iPhone 12. The most costly one features a new camera setup. All of them go on sale in two weeks. A robocaller has been fined nearly $10 million. The FCC says thousands of calls were made with racist and threatening messages. They targeted people in five states, including voters and political candidates. The company used caller ID spoofing to make the calls look like they're coming from a local number. Joe Biden has a new Twitter account to help build a following before his inauguration. He's using the Twitter handle at PresElect Biden. Biden's team will take over the official presidential account on inauguration day. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great Friday. 519 on your Friday.
Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. I know there was a lot of construction earlier. How are the roads looking now? Uh, things are looking uh, fine right now, uh, Stephanie, for uh, Friday morning. A lot of green on the map. Let's uh, go in here. We have uh, some oh, had an issue. This is uh, some old stuff there. So there's take a look at a uh, 410 uh, five uh, minutes between Ray Ellison and 151. I have to clear out some of this stuff for the week. Uh, we mentioned the uh, 410 stuff a little bit earlier. And here's a look at Trans Guy 37 at uh, Jones Avenue looking fine, as does I-10 at Woodlawn. Hey, Sam. Yes. Just do what I do, blame it on computer glitch. <laughs> well, yeah. well, I don't want to if it's, well, you know, it human be. error. If it's my fault, then, you know, I, I'll take responsibility for that. You know. Oh, come it's on. Like, I think Coach Pop would like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, he would say, what was it? Out his to starting lineup was out to lunch. You're not yeah, out, out to lunch. lunch. No. You may That's be out to was. breakfast, Samuel, you're but you're not out to lunch. That's for sure. <laughs> Computer glitch, that's my story. I'm sticking yeah. to it. Anyway, yeah, thank, thanks, thanks for joining on the bandwagon. There's, anyway, a beautiful picture here. Gorgeous day to exercise the dog. Oh, it's a great shot. The horse in the foreground. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we are going to be seeing a beautiful sunrise. As you can see in this picture, nothing uh, that, uh, that jumps out. So there's no uh, visibility problems out there at all. we got a pretty decent wind, and so that's what's going to be helping uh, or preventing any sort of uh, fog from forming up. Plus, given the fact that we've got such dry air, the air really dried out compared to uh, yesterday morning, thanks to those breezy conditions. Now, prior to the front moving on through, we had a southwesterly wind that comes in here off the mountains of Mexico, kind of compresses, and that always then heats us up quite a bit when we have that strong southwesterly wind. That's why we jumped up to 74 degrees yesterday, 76 in Hondo, 80 down there, 83 in Laredo. And today, huge difference because the wind has shifted around. We had that front move on through, even though it wasn't any sort of a big blast of cold air, just that yesterday was basically that the anomaly, not today. This is much closer to a normal high temperature, which is 63 right now. And as far as any uh, clouds, nothing out there. We uh, may see a couple of more clouds tomorrow, a couple more on top of that Sunday, Monday. But overall, the long weekend, starting with today, so call it a four-day weekend, uh, is going to be fantastic. And really nice temperatures, too. Cool in the morning, nice in the afternoons. The front that moved on through here is related to this huge storm complex up there to the north in the, uh, the Great Lakes, Western Great Lakes, Northern Mississippi Valley. Now, in behind, again, with this northwesterly airflow we've got some beautiful weather and there's that giant area of low pressure up there and a high off to the west so this is a classic wintertime weather pattern and watch as we go into next week how things are going to sort of flip flop so we remain very nice over the weekend uh, humidity is going to remain nice as well then we get into monday and we start to see a shift in the overall pattern it's going to be coming out of the southwest and still nice on monday but then we'll have much more clouds, more humidity builds back in here and a chance of rain perhaps late Monday. Not a great chance, but by the middle part of the week, that low is going to be developing and that's going to really start to pump a lot more moisture in here. And we get, a, like I said, a complete shift and that's going to be sticking around through and cut off lows like that because it's just kind of sitting there spinning around itself. Really hard to sort of uh, get a grasp on what they're going to be doing this far out. But like I said, as of right now, it looks like they're going to be uh, it's, it's going to be bringing a lot of rain in here or at least a good chance for rain by the middle of next week. 55 today at noon, sunny skies, high temperature today, only 60 again, much closer to normal than yesterday, but basically a 15 degree difference. It's also going to be windy again today, so hang on to your hats. Then tomorrow, nice cool start, nice warm up in the afternoon. Same thing Sunday, Monday, a little bit milder, more clouds on Monday. Um, still a good looking day and then the better rain chance Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Okay, we could use that. It's, it's looking a little bit more like a spring pattern next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with those temperatures getting up, uh, you know, mid upper 60s, a little bit to down slightly on Wednesday. But uh, the rain, that'd be nice to get a nice extended rainy pattern. Well, it's a here. plus minus thing, especially when it comes to the allergens, because it kind of oh, washes the cedar out, right. but then you get the mold to spike back up a little <laughs> bit. It's our roller coaster. I think a lot of people would almost take mold over cedar. Mm -hmm. mm, that's so. true. I hear, I've been hearing a lot of complaints about cedar. Ask me again Wednesday. Uh, 524, <laughs> 47 or degrees. Later on today when the wind picks up. <laughs> right. <laughs> and still ahead in your morning spotlight, a slew of movie and music stars are set to perform for Joe Biden's inauguration. Plus, why you'll soon see Cardi B in the movies.
527, Lady Gaga is set to sing the national anthem once again. Plus, Cardi B will soon be a movie star. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? Lady Gaga sang the national anthem at the Super Bowl a few years ago and is now set to do it again at another big event, Joe Biden's inauguration. J-Lo will also sing at the January 20th swearing-in, and a star-studded primetime TV special hosted by Tom Hanks will air as well. Justin Timberlake, Bon Jovi, and Demi Lovato are among the artists performing. Cardi B just booked her first lead movie role. The rapper is set to star in the upcoming comedy Assisted Living. She'll play a small-time crook who disguises herself as an elderly woman and hides out from the police in her grandma's nursing home. How dare you show your back to me? Joaquin Phoenix is reteaming with Gladiator director Ridley Scott for another film set in the past. The Oscar-winning actor will play Napoleon in Kitbag, which follows the French emperor's rise to power. The historical epic will stream on Apple TV+. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Well, that's going to be awesome. It will be. You know, Joaquin Phoenix, though, hats off to him. Such a great actor because I actually, I like him, you know, like I like him as an actor and I think he's great. But when that movie came out, Gladiator, I, I hated him. <laughs> he did such he, a good. Because he did his job. He did his job. I was so angry. <laughs> yeah, you were ready for him to die. Yeah, I was. 28, 47 degrees. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Still ahead on GMSA, a closer look at President-elect Biden's COVID-19 proposal that addresses vaccine distribution and economic aid. Well, that's Kit Kat coming out with a new version of its classic candy bar soon. We will have a first look. Hi, good morning. It is Friday, January 15th. We're going to see how the early morning commute is going with Samuel King coming up right now. Here's Mike Osterhage. Happy Friday to you, Michael. Thank you, sir. And yeah, the start of a uh, nice long holiday weekend. It's going to be a fantastic weekend as well. If you want to uh, get outside and enjoy it, pleasant temperatures, cool in the morning and nice in the afternoon. Not too hot, not too cold. And we're going to have a fantastic sunrise today. Temperature right now is at 45. We were at 50 just a couple of hours ago, north uh, northwesterly wind at about 12 miles per hour. So it is fairly breezy out there, especially for this time of the morning. Of course, yesterday, wow, I mean, the winds were just howling. Also, much, much drier air moved on in here. So we've got clear skies, dry air, but we still have that breeze. However, if we didn't have breezy conditions, temperatures would really, really drop down quite a bit. We'd get that good radiational cooling. However, we do have some colder temperatures. Actually, wind chill doesn't even come into play out there. There's hardly that much of a breeze, but uh, we have temperatures down in the 20s and low 30s out in the hill country, so um, about 15 degrees cooler, and some of that cooler air is going to continue to come on in here, so I think we do drop down into the upper 30s here in town when it's all said and done, but right now wind chill feels like 39 in town, 32 at Hondo, and Mountain Cedar of course, this reading was taken before the winds picked up yesterday, so we'll have to see if that did a good shake to those trees, but it did go up uh, tenfold from the previous day's reading. Molds on the low side. 56 today at noon, 60 for a high temperature. Big difference from yesterday. Of course, yesterday was kind of the, the anomaly, if you will. We were 10, almost 15 degrees above normal today, just a couple of notches below normal, and once again, it is going to be a very windy day. You're going to take a closer look at, a, like I said, good-looking weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. What's up, sir? Uh, good morning, Mike. Things are looking fine uh, on the roads this morning. If you uh, need to head out a little bit early, let's take a look at uh, Bandera Road area. Good morning to you folks out there. 11 minutes between 410 and 1604 and then nine minutes the other way. And let's look at travel times from the area. If you're coming in from Bernie to downtown San Antonio, 25 minutes now, so that's a good time. 30 minutes on I-10 from Seguin into San Antonio, 26 minutes from New Braunfels this morning. And here's a look at Transguide 10 at Crossroads, looking fine as does 10 at Callahan. Guys. Thank you, Samuel. President-elect Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan is unveiled. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the $1.9 trillion package aims to protect people from COVID-19 while giving the reeling economy a much needed boost. President-elect Joe Biden's COVID-19 proposal calls for 100 million vaccine shots to be given by the end of his first 100 days in office. We'll have to move heaven and earth 
to get more people vaccinated, to create more places for them to get vaccinated. More than 11 million doses have been given in the U.S., but that's just a drop in the bucket. Just over 1.3 million have gotten both shots, and many people are having trouble getting vaccinated. We called hospitals, we called health departments, doctor's offices, and uh, they all just said that they don't have it. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's latest ensemble forecast predicts up to 94,000 more COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. over the next three weeks. That would be an average of nearly 4,000 deaths per day. There's no doubt that this virus has impacted all of us beyond what we could have ever imagined. Too many families are now missing loved ones. In addition to the rising number of COVID-19 cases and deaths, the pandemic is still strangling the U.S. economy, with 965,000 people filing for first-time unemployment benefits last week. Biden's plan also calls for giving financial aid to millions of Americans. We will finish the job of getting a total of $2,000 in cash relief to people who need it the most. The $600 already appropriated is simply not enough. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The very first confirmation hearing for a crucial position in the Biden administration has been postponed in the Senate. President-elect Joe Biden asked for fast-track approval of his nominee for Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines. But the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence postponed today's scheduled confirmation hearing. The postponement is said to be because one senator wanted to hold the hearings in person instead of remotely. Acting Intelligence Chair Senator Marco Rubio of Florida says the committee is working as fast as possible if confirmed by the Senate, Avril Haines, a former top CIA official, would be the first woman to lead the U.S. intelligence community. The two major lottery jackpots keep getting bigger. Tonight's Mega Millions drawing for an estimated $750 million. No one won the most recent Powerball jackpot either, sending that top prize to about $640 million. Between the Powerball and Mega Millions, nearly $1.4 billion is up for grabs. Good luck, everybody. And time now is 536 and 46 degrees for now. Give me a break. Why the famous Kit Kat bar is getting a little bit healthier. And also next, federal officials continue to warn of extremists they think may carry out more attacks after the riots at the Capitol. I'm back here at home outside with live cam as we start out your early Friday morning looking back towards the downtown skyline. Michael, get us updated on what to expect this weekend weather-wise and looking ahead to what could be a wet couple of days next week. Five thirty-nine. federal law enforcement officials say domestic extremists may be prompted to strike during Joe Biden's inauguration after seeing what happened at the U.S. Capitol. CNN's Nadia Romero is in Washington with more on that investigation. Concrete barricades and metal fencing popping up alongside bunting and banners, signs of growing concerns of violence at President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. We are committed to an orderly transition uh, and to a safe inauguration. And the American people deserve nothing less. Law enforcement agencies warned the assault on the U.S. Capitol could inspire homegrown terrorists around the country. We are seeing an extensive amount uh, of concerning online chatter, I guess the best way I would describe it, about a number of events surrounding the inauguration. And together with our partners, we evaluate those threats uh, and what kind of resources to deploy against them. Already, prosecutors have charged dozens of people with federal crimes related to the Capitol chaos. Law enforcement expects to arrest hundreds more. We've already identified over 200 suspects, so we know who you are if you're out there, uh, and FBI agents are coming to find you. The chatter about copycat attacks has put federal and state officials on high alert. They won't catch anyone by surprise this time. We know they're there. We know how violent they can be. In response, thousands of armed National Guard troops surround Washington, D.C. Barriers block streets, and the iconic National Mall will be closed on Inauguration Day. We are on the path to making sure that it is secure, and it is going to be secure. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Right now it's 541, 46 degrees. And coming up next, you can now break off a smaller and a little healthier piece of that Kit Kat bar. We're going to explain. 
And welcome back. It's 544. In your morning consumer headlines, Disneyland is ending its annual pass program. The amusement park says the decision comes amid the continued uncertainty of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Anaheim California Park is also faced with limitations around reopening. Disneyland is currently being used as a COVID vaccination site. Disney Park officials say the passport program started nearly 40 years ago. People with passes will be given refunds. At its Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida, Florida, annual passes are still valid, but guest capacity is very limited. Get ready to break off a piece of a slimmed down Kit Kat par. Hershey's is expanding the thin candy lineup to include skinny Kit Kats. They're hitting stores in February. Kit Kat thins feature two crispy wafers with a chocolate coating. The standard Kit Kat made up of three layers of wafers. Hershey says each bar comes individually wrapped for a perfect snacking option. They come in a three ounce bag for $2.39 or a seven ounce bag for nearly $4. Hershey's already sells York Peppermint Patty Thins and Reese's Thins. Amazon pledging to invest more than $2 billion over the next five years toward affordable housing in three cities where it has major operations. The tech giant's new housing equity fund will invest in moderate to low income housing around Seattle, Nashville and Arlington, Virginia, where the company ultimately expects to have at least 5,000 employees each. The first investment of more than $567 million will go towards 1,300 affordable apartment units near HQ2, Amazon's new Virginia headquarters, and up to 1,000 apartments near its Seattle, Washington headquarters. In Arlington, Amazon said it has invested $381.9 million in loans offered at below market rates, as well as grants to Washington Housing Conservancy that will go towards 1,300 affordable homes on the Crystal House property near HQ2. And in Washington, Amazon's investment of $185.5 million went to the King County Housing Authority to preserve up to 1,000 affordable homes. Amazon has been criticized in the past for gentrifying the areas where it has opened large operations and driving up the cost of housing. Amazon says its new approach is designed to help low and middle income families in the areas it currently calls homes. In each of the three regions, the company is targeting homes for households making between 30% and 80% of the area's median income. In addition to its $2 billion investment, the fund also includes $125 million in grants to minority-led organizations and public agencies aimed at improving the shortage of affordable housing, which disproportionately affects people of color. This is all according to Amazon. Now, the fund will also give grants to government partners like the transit agencies and school districts, that way helping working families and those in need. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max. Go ahead and check traffic with Samuel King. How are things looking now? Well, first uh, we'll have a look if you are traveling uh, this holiday weekend to look at gas prices and they are ticking up. They've actually reached $2 per gallon in Bear County for the first time in a long time. Uh, $2.11 is a statewide average to 37 increased demand, increased oil prices according to AAA Texas is what's leading to the increase. So that's something to watch out for this weekend. Still relatively affordable in the grand scheme of things. Traffic wise, if you're heading out, start an early trip, things uh, look fine across the area. And here's a look at Transguide 1604 at Wiseman 281 at Decorey, all looking fine at this hour. Maybe people have started their holiday a little early, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Very possible. Mike Oster, hey, just kind of a stark winter scene behind you, but it's still absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and this is going to be uh, what you'll be seeing this weekend as far as moon clear skies. We're going to have some uh, beautiful viewing weather, especially if you head out in toward the uh, hill country away from the, the city lights. And that's the tiny little crescent moon. It is the uh, waxing crescent moon. So we've hit the new moon phase just a few days ago. And then on the 28th of the month, it is going to be full. But yeah, just a beautiful picture. I love the little bare limbs of the trees right there in the foreground too. Thanks very much for the Acacia Connect picture. All right, uh, pretty soon we should be seeing Venus come up and then obviously that's going to be followed by the sun. Great looking sunrise this morning. It is kind of breezy out there, especially for this time of the morning. Uh, winds about 12, 15 miles per hour in places, not as much in the hill country. So we have a little bit more of a wind chill here in town. Actually, temperatures are down in the upper 20s and low 30s out in portions of the hill country. We are at uh, 45 right now, but it feels like 39. 
29 with that breeze and then the wind is going to be picking up later on today and temperatures are going to be cooler because yesterday we had the wind coming in here out of the southwest. It's a down sloping breeze that tends to compress it a little bit more and that heats up. And that's why we got up to 74. But today it's the northwesterly wind and that's going to keep us on the the cool side. As a matter of fact, I think some of that cooler air is going to continue to come in here over the course of the morning. And so that's going to uh, knock us down into the uh, going for upper 30s when it's all said and done this morning. So we've got a lot of dry air around here, maybe a little wisp or two of uh, a high wispy cloud later on today, but a good looking day. Plenty of, uh, you know, good stargazing weather for tonight and obviously nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture up to the north. Huge winter storm. Obviously this one just kind of jumps off the map and this is actually responsible for bringing that front through yesterday, which it wasn't a big blast of cold air. It's just kind of a reality check because yesterday was the anomaly. Like I said, with those uh, southwesterly winds that put temperatures so high. So there's that huge low and that's going to be dominating things basically all weekend long. Then we have another system which is going to be kind of developing as we go into the middle of next week. Things are going to sort of shift around a little bit and that's going to increase our rain chances by the middle part of next week. 55 today at noon. Lots of sunshine out there. Good looking day. Very breezy though. Winds really going to start to pick up and so we're going to be seeing wind uh, out of the northwest about about 15 25 miles per hour and gusting difference with yesterday though it's only going to be 60 so if you're in the shade and you get those winds that are really howling it is going to be on the nippy side and it's going to cool off winds will subside fairly quickly once the sun goes down tonight so it'll cool off relatively quickly and if you're going to be out this evening a jacket's a pretty good idea tomorrow 35 degrees starting off a little bit on the cool side of normal normal right now is 41 we get up to 62 and Sunday looks like a good looking day as well as Monday. A little bit warmer each and every day. A couple of more clouds each and every day, but overall the long holiday weekend is going to be uh, fantastic. And then kind of an overall pattern change. We get up into the mid and upper 60s middle of the week and better rain chances. Right now it's looking like good rain chances for Tuesday and Wednesday. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there. We can need it. I mean, we were so behind most of last year. Yeah, yeah and especially the last couple of months of last year. Mm -hmm. For the month of January so far, we're above normal, but you go back to December right. mm -hmm. and include that and we're way below. Yeah, time to put some rain in the bank. Yep. Yeah, and we'll get our raincoats ready as well. Thank you, Mike. 551, 46 degrees. The movie and video game for Scott Pilgrim versus the world celebrating their 10th anniversary this year. We're going to have a preview next. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers, starting out with pick three, 242, Fireball 1, your daily four numbers, 5026, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 4, 14, 22, 33, 34. And your Texas two step 21, 23, 26, 29, bonus ball 18. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, President-elect Biden revealing his massive new coronavirus rescue plan. What's in it? Is it going to help? Also, the clock ticking down to President Trump's historic second impeachment trial. And then more than 20,000 National Guard troops are descending on our nation's capital, all ahead of the potential violence around Inauguration Day. Our political team is standing by with more on all of that right here on GMA. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game complete edition is back after the original game released in 2010, but disappeared a few years later. Yeah, this is kind of a big blunder that Ubisoft pulled on the video game industry. They had this game up for sale on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 digital stores. So you could download it to your hard drives back then. But then of course what happened is we got a new console generation with the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. And this game was tied to licensing rights with the Universal Movie, and it didn't carry forward. And this was not a game that people with new consoles could download. So if you didn't have it on your legacy machines and you hadn't purchased it back in the day, there was no way to play it. There was no way to find this game. This time, the game will be available in physical formats. However, once again, Ubisoft is going to offer this game digitally, and I think what everybody should kind of be aware of is that sometimes when games are purchased digitally, they do disappear, and the games industry has got to reconcile with that. 
leveling up in Hollywood. I'm Rick Damagella. We want to invite you to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall. We have a panel of experts that will be explaining mental illness and how you can make a difference. It's all coming up Wednesday, January 27th. More information is available at ksaccommunity.com. HEB no longer holds the title of nation's top grocery store chain, Amazon, edging ahead of the, according to the global consumer science company, Dunhumby. No, so how far has Amazon jumped ahead since last year? And which store is now in third place? We have the study online right now at ksat.com. Glad you're with us on this Friday morning. If you're getting a jump start on home improvement projects, it can be easy to feel overwhelmed. Just ahead on GMSA, we'll show you some ways to help you plan your projects a little bit better. And TransSky, let's see how things are looking out there right now, live at I-10 and Callahan. We've got some very light traffic out there, no major problems. I-37 at Jones Avenue, you're watching GMSA. President-elect Joe Biden putting out his plan to fight the coronavirus pandemic, and it could have a direct impact on your paycheck. We'll see what his plans are when he takes office next week. The San Antonio Riverwalk Association is keeping these holiday lights up a little longer this year. Coming up, we'll tell you why. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we started in the 40s, much different than yesterday and pretty much the rest of the week. But we are expecting a nice weekend. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Friday, January 15th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Friday. Hope you have plans this weekend because it's going to look pretty nice. It is going to be nice. And then we need some rain around here. Mike says that might happen in the next week or so. He has all those details. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, just the, the timing of it is fantastic. Long holiday weekend, beautiful temperatures, uh, you know, a couple of extra clouds as the weekend goes on, but overall nice. And then next week we're still looking at, uh, you know, the decent chance for some rain. It, a little bit on the breezy side this morning. This on the tail of uh, or on the heels of those winds yesterday. Wow. I mean, just shaking the window rattling everything and they're going to be picking up again today. Now we've got some clear skies out there, uh, 44 degrees right now. So we're continuing to drop down a little bit more. It's all said and done. I think we're getting into the upper 30s here in town and got some 20s and 30s out in the hill country. So sort of a big difference, but that cooler air is going to continue to uh, work its way down to the uh, south. Although the wind prevents it from getting as cold as what it could get. Now, that in mind, we do have a wind chill to deal with right now. 40 in town, 34 New Braunfels, and 35 in Honda. Nice warm up throughout the day, but nowhere near yesterday. Yesterday was the anomaly because we had those southwesterly winds, which always heat things up. Get, it sinks and downsloping compresses a little bit, and that's why we got up to 74 yesterday, only 60 today. Also, Mountain Cedar yesterday was sky high compared to the previous day, went up tenfold, and those numbers, that reading was taken before the wind started to pick up. So we dropped down a couple of more degrees here in town this morning, and then wind starts to pick up as well. Going to be uh, 15, 25 mile per hour winds throughout the afternoon hours, especially, and then gusting on top of that. We'll make it up to 56 today at noon and top off with a high temperature up to 60. Normal high 63, so actually a shade on the, the cool side of things, and then it's going to well, winds will ease up later on this evening. It's going to cool off kind of quickly. But again, a nice looking weekend. Those details are going to be coming up in just a couple of minutes. If you are hitting the roads for some weekend travel, your traffic authority, Samuel, what's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Things uh, looking uh, pretty good uh, right now. You can see uh, on uh, the map there, not much going on. Well, we will have some construction uh, coming up beginning on Monday here between on Alamo Ranch Parkway between Lone Star Parkway and 1604. They're doing some improvements out there. Some of that works uh, already begun, but you can see uh, things there moving smoothly on in Western Bear County this morning. And take a look at some travel times. If you're coming in on I-10 from uh, Bernie, 24 minutes on 90 from Castroville into downtown, 20 minutes, uh, 17 minutes on 35 from Lido this morning. And here's a look at Transguy 10 at Callahan, looking fine, as does 37 at Jones. Mark Stephanie, over to you. 
Thank you, Samuel. A 43 year old man who was shot and then dropped off at a West Side fire station last night is in critical condition this morning. The man was initially found at the fire station in the 600 block of South Hamilton around 915 last night and was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Police say the man was the victim of a shooting in the 100 block of Apache Street just south of Culebra and west of I-10. Officials are still looking for the people who dropped off the victim at the fire station and for the people responsible for the shooting. San Antonio police are asking for your help solving a murder case that happened a year ago today. Police say the two victims on your screen, Vanessa Mujica and Kyle Warren, drove with a friend to buy narcotics on Calabria at Timberview just outside of Loop 410. They say something happened and the people they were meeting with shot them. The suspects drove off in a dark colored Acura. Police say the meetup was arranged by one of the suspects called Ace Money on Snapchat with the username of Certified Plug. If you have any information, Call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. To the pandemic, local health officials report 1,821 excuse me, 1,829 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. 19 more people have died from the virus in our community. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the seven day moving average is now up to 1,782 cases a day. The mayor says hospitalization rates have declined slightly over the past few days, but there's still cause for concern because the decline is not sustained. 158 people needed medical treatment because of the virus in the past 24 hours. City of San Antonio says some 100 people who signed up for the COVID-19 Workforce Recovery Program last fall have now completed their training. The plan offered training to those who lost their jobs due to the pandemic and gave them a stipend. The city says 4,000 people registered and 3,000 are close to completing their training. A woman who will begin the three-month training to become an administrative assistant says the program has been life-changing for her. Now's the time to do anything, right? Because if you're just sitting at home, why not take some virtual classes and just just do it. Just get out there. I mean, the world, the pandemic's here, but the world didn't stop. Your tax dollars in service to your you and your neighbors um, and making sure that you have the resources to connect to that that next job and that next career. There is still money and spots available for training. Call 311 to sign up or for more information. President-elect Joe Biden is outlining his plan to fight the coronavirus. In addition to billions of dollars for vaccination efforts, President-elect Biden is calling for bigger stimulus checks for Americans and a boost in the minimum wage. ABC's Alex Perche has the details. With five days to go before the inauguration, President-elect Biden is unveiling his plan to fight COVID-19. My first appearance before a joint session of Congress, I will lay out my Bill Back Better recovery plan. The nearly $2 trillion proposal calls for new $1,400 stimulus payments to most Americans, plus $130 billion to reopen schools and $160 billion to build a national vaccine program and boost testing. Countless families and friends left behind with unrelenting grief and guilt, anger and frustration. And the emptiness felt by the loss of life is compounded by the loss of our way of life. It comes as hospitals beg for backup. In Los Angeles County, one in three people now have contracted COVID. Ambulances gridlocked outside the ER. Inside, gurneys one behind another. But at this field hospital built in just five days, the only thing missing is oxygen. We need a large quantity of oxygen at all times, constantly. We can't ever run out because if we run out, they could die. They could die. The nation's death toll is now approaching 400,000. Last week's toll was 25% higher than at any other time during the pandemic. Amid the crush of patients, a rush to vaccinate. But some cities warn they're running out of doses. We don't have enough supply to go beyond phase one. The shortage forcing some cities to slow the vaccine rollout to lower risk people. And in areas where shots are in stock, appointments are not. There was not one ounce of availability on any site. Alex Perche, ABC News, New York. President-elect Biden asking one of his White House nominees to take a side job for the inauguration. Lisa Monaco is President-elect Biden's Deputy Attorney General nominee. He's asked her to serve as his inauguration team's Homeland Security Advisor. She would coordinate with security officials on safety concerns in the days leading up to the inauguration. Federal authorities warned that domestic extremists are likely emboldened to carry out attacks on the inauguration after the U.S. Capitol riots.
Back here at home, a San Antonio holiday tradition will continue for another month. A month, yes. The San Antonio Riverwalk Association will extend the holiday lights along the world famous Riverwalk. Our Stephen Cavazos is live there this morning with some interesting facts on the San Antonio attraction. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, if you didn't know this already, there are over 200 cypress trees here along the San Antonio Riverwalk and over 2,250 strings of lights that have been draped over these trees. And if you're all about the numbers, that is over 100,000 lights. And no, we didn't do all that counting ourselves. This is all according to the San Antonio Riverwalk Association. Now, Executive Director Maggie Thompson does tell us that this has been an ongoing tradition here in the Alamo City since the 1970s. Now, the lights are put up as early as September and would usually be down by now. But the San Antonio Riverwalk Association is extending the holiday lights through Valentine's Day. Now, Thompson says this is all in an effort to lift up spirits following a difficult year. People love it. It's it's a magical feeling. They twinkle. Um, I, I love the thought of people calling it magical because the Riverwalk itself is that way, even without the lights, but it just enhances the experience. Now, it is important to note that safety is still a top priority. The Riverwalk is disinfected every night. Thompson says it's probably the cleanest it's ever been. It's ever been and encourages people to come on out. Now, again, the lights will be up through Valentine's Day. She's hoping that maybe they'll see a record number of proposals that day. So maybe a good day to bring out your significant other. Stephen, will extending the lights become a new tradition here in San Antonio? Well, Mark, that's still not clear, but they're not ruling out that possibility. There are talks of adding a programmable light that will adjust colors for each special holiday. However, that is still in the works. Whatever it does happen, Thompson says it will still be magical. Back to you. Yes, it will. Thank you, Stephen. Right now to 610, 47 degrees. And for many, it's a feeling of justice being served. We will see how much one robocaller was fined by the federal government. Cemetery tour showcasing the lives of notable African Americans here in San Antonio. After the break, we will see how it's part of Dream Week. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting in the 40s, a little bit more milder. Hey, maybe a great chance to check out those lights on the Riverwalk. I know I will this weekend, at least in the morning, the early morning hours. We'll be right back. Six fourteen. Welcome back. Dream Week, a week that celebrates humanity and bringing people together, has kicked off this week. As part of the many events held during Dream Week, the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum will hold a historical tour of Eastview Cemetery, highlighting notable African Americans in San Antonio. Sarah Costa spoke with the director about why taking a look back in time is more important now than ever. Everyone has a story. However, Deborah Jarman, the executive director of the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum, says the trailblazing stories of people of color have been historically harder to find. What you'll find with not just African Americans, but people of color in general, is that our stories weren't written. So we have to investigate our stories. It's why SACAM is hosting a tour in Eastview Cemetery on Saturday of local African American historical icons and the impacts they made in the community. What cemeteries do, they give us an opportunity to take a peek at that buried history um, so we can discover more about our ancestors. Each tour will last about 45 minutes here in the south end of the cemetery, where the majority of people who are buried here are African American, some dating back to the early 1920s. They can expect a safe, socially distanced tour. We will have docents and we're going to explore about 11 grave sites of some pretty amazing people. One of those amazing people includes Myra Davis Hemmings. She was one of the founders of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, establishing the local chapter in San Antonio. Hemmings was also a famous actress who starred in many race films when they were popular in the first half of the 20th century. Another notable will be one of the Suttons. We'll go to a couple of their grave sites, but we'll talk about Reverend Alexander Carver Sutton, who George Washington Carver was his godfather. He was the president of the Texas NAACP and also the owner of the Sutton Paradise Funeral Home. Jarman hopes a tour can bring people together and inspire others to make a difference. 
And when you're walking and you're talking about people that used to live here and what they contributed to San Antonio, what you realize is that you have something to contribute as well. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Tours take place tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Eastview Cemetery. Tickets cost $25 and must be bought online before Saturday. You can find that link on our website at KSAT.com. Let's check traffic at 617. How are things looking, Samuel King? Uh, things looking uh, mostly uh, okay on the road, Stephanie and Mark. We do have a stalled vehicle reported here on uh, Loop 410. This is at Sinclair Road, but uh, it's not really impacting traffic at this point. And here, uh, the medical center area, Fredericksburg Road, uh, had a little bit of a delay, but it seems to be improving. But 16 minutes, that's a little uh, higher than we normally see this time of morning. So a lot of people out and about in that part of town. And taking a look at transit guide at 35 at Cesar Chavez looking fine this morning as does 90 at Zarzamora folks. And it is time for a bus stop forecast. Yep and depending on where you are depends on how long you may need to uh, warm up the seat of the bus or your vehicle because uh, on the hill country it's much much colder and then here in town we have temperatures that are in the uh, kind of low mid 40s right now. I think we will drop down a few more degrees this morning so 38 when it's all uh, said and done and then a high today up to 60 so big difference from yesterday. Yesterday was 74 but that was the anomaly because we had those uh, southwesterly winds which are down sloping. They tend to uh, compress and heat things up a lot more so today is going to be closer to normal albeit slightly below normal. Look at this gorgeous picture picture out there and this was kind of the the second picture to the one showed earlier this morning out there at the uh, 360 overlook at Austin in that pretty oh my goodness gracious yeah and we're gonna have some well gorgeous sunrise and sunset today thank you for the case at connect picture and no glow of the sun yet and that speck on the lens or is that Venus right there but then anyway, we will be seeing that and uh, like I said good looking sunrise out in the hill country, you don't have as much of a breeze and just temperatures are down in the 20s and below freezing. Then here in town, we've got a little more of a wind. For this time of the morning, it's uh, kind of breezy. 40 is what it uh, feels like. And 35 is the wind chill in Hondo, 34 New Braunfels. And then the wind is going to be picking up later on this afternoon or late this morning in this afternoon. So get ready because another uh, windy one. Dew point temperatures, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere really dropped down considerably from yesterday. Of course, you know, yesterday in the past couple of days, we were sort of flirting with a little bit of fog here and there. But with that front that moved on through, that really dried things out. And if we didn't have the wind, we'd be dropping down a lot more this morning because we've got the clear skies and the very dry air. But yeah, it's much more comfortable out there, and that's going to allow temperatures to be on the, the cool side and very comfortable the next couple of days. And dew points will remain low through the first part of the weekend through Sunday, and then they're going to start to come back up again, and that's going to help out with more clouds. We'll see a couple more clouds each and every day going through the weekend, but overall the long holiday weekend looks fantastic, and then a lot more humidity next week, but the nice thing is that's also going to help out with some rain chances next week. We've got a pretty good shot at some rain starting maybe maybe a straight shower late Monday, but basically Tuesday and Wednesday lingering into Thursday as it looks right now around the country. I mean, yeah, it is cold. I mean, 16 in Casper, but there's not any just like huge masses of Arctic air, despite the fact that we've got this huge storm system sitting up there in the uh, kind of northern plains, western Great Lakes area, and that's what forced the front through here yesterday. And so that's going to basically stay in control of us throughout the rest of the weekend, keeping things very, very pleasant. Then it starts to move on out of here. We start to see a bigger shift in the overall weather pattern, and this low is going to be developing out there to the west. So that'll keep us in primarily a uh, west to southwesterly flow going into the middle part of next week. That's going to help out with the humidity and disturbances moving on through here. That's what's going to be helping out with rain chances next week. So today, start of the weekend looks fantastic. 55 uh, sunny skies, wind starts to pick up and it's going to be very breezy today or just downright windy. Winds out of the northwest about 15, 25 miles per hour. 60 for a high temperature, a couple of notches below normal in the sunshine. Maybe no jacket, get in the shade with those winds. Probably going to want to keep a jacket handy and it'll cool off fairly quickly tonight. Winds will subside once the sun goes down tomorrow. Chilly start, nice afternoon. Sunday, chilly start, nice afternoon. Same thing on Monday, a little bit milder Monday. And a few more clouds here and there. And then, like I said, the uh, pretty decent chance right now. Some rain Tuesday and Wednesday. Much more milder, though, this coming week than it was yeah. this past week. Mm -hmm. Big, big uh, kind of pattern change.
All right. Thank you, Mike. 621, 47 degrees. And this morning, a group of healthcare workers in Alaska are racing to deliver the COVID-19 vaccine by snowmobile. Find out more in your GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Jeff has been to the bottom of the ocean, the tops of mountains, and wherever this guy runs off to. A life well lived should continue at home. With Home Instead Care, older adults can stay home, safe, and happy. Home Instead, to us, it's personal. A must in your medicine cabinet. Less sick days. Cold coming on? Zycam is clinically proven to shorten colds. Highly recommended. Zycams love Zycam's unique zinc formula. It shortens colds. Zycam zinc back cold. Big news. New Kellogg's Cinnamon Roll Frosted Mini Wheats. Bakery fresh cinnamon roll flavor in every bite. You're gonna love them. Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminish wrinkled skin in just two days. New Crepe Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Championing your skin. In this morning's GMA First Look, we're taking you up close and personal with an all-female team delivering COVID-19 vaccines by snowmobile through the harsh conditions of rural Alaska. If the teams didn't make these trips, some of these people would have no way to get the vaccine. Once they land, villagers drive out to them on snowmobiles. The women load up in a sled and are pulled the rest of the way into the village. In one day, this team traveled hundreds of miles, vaccinating 65 people. In the past month, various teams have made about 30 of these trips. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live to all four members of this intrepid team and hear the stories of their incredible quest to bring hope to the farthest reaches of our country. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kena Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. Joe Biden has a new Twitter account to Twitter account rather to build a following uh, before his inauguration. He's using the Twitter handle at Prez Elect Biden. President Elect Biden's team will take over the official presidential accounts on inauguration day. The new Galaxy S21 line is out from Samsung. The three new device range from $800 to $1,200. The less expensive models cost the same as Apple's iPhone 12s. Now, the most costly one features a new camera setup. All of them go on sale in two weeks. Listen to this. A robocaller has been fined nearly $10 million. The Federal Communications Commission says thousands of calls were made with racist and threatening messages. They targeted people in five states, including voters and political candidates. The company used caller ID spoofing to disguise the origin of the calls. And time now is 626 and 47 degrees for now. Security measures are increasing in Washington ahead of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. We'll see what that could mean for next week's event. And the Spurs, oh, the Spurs. They played their first game at home in about 10 days last night, and we're going to see how close it was between them and the Rockets at the AT&T Center. And we'll check back in with our traffic authority, Samuel King, as we take a look at TransGuide. You're watching GMSA. state of security in the nation's capital ahead of Joe Biden's inauguration. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. Made it to Friday. Congratulations, everybody. We'll see how the weekend is looking weather-wise. Looking pretty good so far. And Mike says there's rain in the extended forecast. Happy Friday. It's January 15th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you're looking forward to the weekend because the weather will be great. Yeah, you saw the headline. Beautiful weekend, Mike oster -Hage. Yeah, just fantastic. I mean, we're going to have nice, pleasant temperatures, um, cool mornings, pleasant afternoons, a lot of sunshine, you know, a couple of extra clouds uh, each and every day. But but overall, through the long holiday weekend, it's going to look really nice. And there we see the planet Venus, and we're going to start seeing the glow in, well, just a couple of minutes of the, uh, the sunrise this morning. 44 degrees. We 
were at 50 a couple of hours ago, so we've been slowly dropping down. Very dry air out there and clear skies, which in most cases we'd get really, really chilly, but we still have a, a bit of a breeze out there this morning. However, out in the hill country, it is pretty cold. The temperatures well down into the 20s right now. Rock Springs at 36 degrees, and some of that cooler air will kind of push on in here, so I still think we're going to be dropping down a few more degrees when it's all said and done here in town. Mountain Cedar, yesterday's reading, really shot up. 10 times what it was the previous day. And again, that was taken. That reading was taken before the wind picked up yesterday. So today's count is going to be coming out in about 45 minutes, an hour or so. Hopefully it's not too high. Sunny and windy today. Yeah, wind's going to pick back up later on this afternoon out of the northwest this time at about 15, 25 miles per hour, as opposed to the southwesterly wind we had yesterday. That put us up in the mid 70s, only 60 today. A few more clouds, you know, here and there over the weekend, but overall just a really nice, nice weekend in through Monday. Then it's going to start to warm up, and we also have some uh, decent rain chances coming in here midweek. We'll talk all about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and, well, right smack dab in the middle. I see something going on yeah, there. We have a stalled vehicle reported here on uh, 410, and we also might have this new uh, crash up here just south of New Braunfels here. This is at 35 and Psalms Road. This is uh, northbound. You see the traffic flow is still pretty good here, but there are some delays uh, on Psalms itself. And so let's take a look at a, a travel time between uh, New Braunfels and 410 in Austin going northbound where this uh, crash is 19 minutes still 19 minutes the other way. So the traffic still flowing well. If you're coming from also from the east from Seguin into downtown 30 minutes on I-10, 24 minutes from Bernie on I-10, 28 minutes uh, this morning from Pleasanton into downtown San Antonio. And and here's a look at Transguide right now, 410 at Fredericksburg, I-10 at Crossroads. Traffic picking up a little bit, but things mostly flowing well. Over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Security preparations ahead of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration next Wednesday have ramped up in the nation's capital. Following last week's violent riots, the FBI says it's tracking online chatter that could pose a threat to the festivities next week. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. A good morning, a heightened state of security in Washington right now. Authorities say they're sifting through more than 140,000 digital media tips ahead of the inauguration. This morning, the nation's capital looking like a fortress. Seven foot fencing topped with razor wire now surrounding the Capitol building. And behind it, some of the 21,000 National Guard members deployed for the inauguration. More American troops in Washington now than in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. Officials also considering keeping crowds out of the National Mall for Biden swearing in. It's amazing at one time and then again, it's kind of scary. FBI Director Christopher Wray says the agency is tracking extensive online chatter about potential armed protests. We're looking at individuals who may have an eye towards repeating that same kind of violence that we saw last week. Investigators say so far 80 cases have been charged in federal court and 34 people have been arrested in connection with the riot. The FBI has identified more than 200 suspects. Anybody who plots or attempts violence in the coming week should count on a visit. At 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, new images of the transition in action. Moving trucks at the White House. President Trump's aides seen packing up. Ensure that we have a safe inauguration. And during the inauguration, the FBI says it plans to operate round-the-clock command posts at each of its 56 field offices and its headquarters. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The very first confirmation hearings for a crucial position in the Biden administration has been postponed in the U.S. Senate. President-elect Joe Biden asked for a fast-track approval of his nominee for Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines, but the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence postponed today's scheduled confirmation hearing. Acting Intelligence Chair Senator Marco Rubio of Florida says one senator wanted to hold the hearings in person instead of remotely. If confirmed by the Senate, Haynes, a former top CIA official, would be the first woman to lead the U.S. intelligence community. The coronavirus pandemic is driving up the number of deaths from opioid overdoses, according to federal health officials. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimates as many as 90,000 Americans died from drug overdoses in 2020. Early data shows a 21% increase in overdose fatalities, and officials with Health and Human Services say that number is expected to grow. In addition to the depression, isolation, and hopelessness blamed on the pandemic, new synthetic opioids are emerging with deadly 
deadly consequences. The rate of opioid deaths had been falling until a new spike appeared starting in the fall of 2019. In your morning headlines, at least 34 people have died. Hundreds more are hurt after an earthquake triggered landslides in Indonesia. U.S. Geological Survey said the earthquake was a magnitude 6.2 and was shallow. It occurred in Sulawesi Island, just north of Western Australia. Local search and rescue teams report people are still trapped under collapsed buildings because the earthquake happened in the middle of the night while most people were still asleep. There's another surge in the number of Americans filing for unemployment. The Labor Department says 965,000 people filed first-time claims last week, a jump of 181,000 from the week before. However, however, some experts say part of the jump may be people who have been out of work for months reapplying for benefits after lawmakers renewed an unemployment supplement plan. More car, car makers running into production problems and slowdowns because of a shortage of computer chips. Ford, Subaru and Toyota have all had to cut back at plants here in the U.S. They say part of the problem is the Trump administration's policies targeting China's tech sector, which slowed the manufacturing of some chips. Toyota, of course, has a big truck plant on San Antonio's south side. The IRS opened its free file for the 2021 tax season. The government agency works with private companies to help Americans prepare and file their taxes. The service is available to anyone who makes adjusted gross income of $72,000 or less. Even though it's free, a government audit found that 14 million people ended up paying for their 2019 filing. Tax day is April 15th. NASA says its Orion spacecraft is ready for its mission to the moon. Orion slated to launch for three different missions this year. Orion capsule will fly out and orbit the moon before returning to Earth. A mission slated to take three weeks and there will not be a crew. After that, the crewed Artemis II mission will take off at some point. The spacecraft will also orbit the moon before returning to Earth. Finally, Artemis III will be a historic mission. If all goes as planned, the spacecraft will land and the first woman will walk on the moon. The lawmakers are just beginning the 87th session of the Texas legislature. They have to craft a budget with declining revenues as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Samuel King joins us now. Samuel, could the budget crunch mean more fees and taxes for all of us Texas drivers? Yeah, that could be a possibility, but of course, in Austin, there's a lot of reluctance to uh, raise taxes or increase taxes. Texas has already seen a almost $2 billion drop in revenue during the budget period, and that has some lawmakers looking for ways to fund the state's transportation needs. One idea involves the fuel tax. It's among the lowest among the 10 states with the biggest populations in this country, and it hasn't been adjusted here in Texas in 30 years. So House Transportation Committee Chairman Terry Canales says it's time to tie that tax to inflation, something that's done in several other states. He says he also supports some proposals to add fees for electric vehicle owners who pay less in fuel taxes. Even hybrids don't use as much gas, but still travel the same amount of lane, mile, uh, lane miles as regular vehicles, ostensibly. And so um, how do we quantify for the amount of saved fuel, but less revenue? And so those are questions, and they're difficult questions, but they need to be answered. Canales also says the trucking industry may need to pay more of a fair share. He says they consume far more pavement, if you will, uh, than they actually pay for. And the Texas population still expected to double by 2050. And there's only so many new roads you can build. So he says lawmakers will also need to invest more in mass transit and bullet trains in the coming years. Mark, Stephanie. Far reaching topic. Thank you, Samuel. More to come on that. 640, 46 degrees. And if you're getting a jump start on home improvement projects, it can be easy to feel overwhelmed. After the break, we're going to tell you ways to breathe through the anxiousness. When assessing what changes to make to your home this year, some improvements will be your choice, but others are necessary, like repairing big problems you uncover in your new house. For the whole house, there were many different things that when I peeled back the layers, I had to do more. Knowing which projects to tackle first is a daunting task for any homeowner. To plan for improvement around your home, it helps to have a system to guide your strategy, whether your home is new or just new to you. I recommend walking around your house just like you're getting ready to buy it because that's when you're going to be most critical. Write down everything you see and don't worry about budget just yet. Look at the whole house from the foundation up to the roof and everything in between. Next, group your list according to structural, mechanical, maintenance and improvement. Then lay your budget against it starting with structural first. 
no matter what, you're always going to run into something unexpected. With a system in mind and your priority set, planning for the unexpected is a little less daunting. This will help you see how far your budget will go and avoid surprises. It'll tell you whether that dream landscape job will be on your list or whether it's going to be a new roof instead. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio Spurs took on the Rockets last night. First game played without James Harden. Silver and Black got off to a slow start, falling behind 10 points early on, but the team started clicking. DeMar DeRozan back after missing the previous two games started the Spurs run. He would have 13.7 assists. Young players would continue to drive the Spurs in the game with Keldon Johnson leading the way. 29 points, but despite Harden being shipped out of town, Spurs fall short. Rockets win their first road game of the year, 109 105 against our Spurs. First quarter to the fourth, they played harder. Um, just that simple. Um, we aren't knocking down uh, shots, you know, still a little bit winning, I guess, but um, it was just all effort. It's got nothing to do with defense, offense. It has to do with between the ears and being ready to play. And we had four or five guys who were out to lunch. Good talk, Pop. Thanks. Uh, Spurs, <laughs> stay home for the next game. The Rockets will stay in San Antonio. Silver and Black play Houston again tomorrow afternoon. Tip-off schedule for 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You can watch it at Fox Sports Southwest. Watch KSAT for highlights and reactions. Ouch. Oh. Out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Pop. <laughs> yeah, We're looking for a little more effort, I guess. 646 I guess. right now. Let's go ahead and check with Samuel King, who is not out to breakfast. He's here. I'm He's here. The He's here. I'm going to give yeah. my best effort here. Uh, <laughs> things looking all right this morning, uh, Mark and Stephanie. Uh, but we do have uh, this uh, crash still south of New Braunfels. This is 35 heading northbound here at Psalms Road, but not really impacting traffic uh, too much and heading southbound if you're coming into town. Uh, if you're on 35 uh, from New Braunfels, that's 27 minutes, 35 uh, on I-10 from Seguin. I'll get it right. There's a lot of threes there. Uh, <laughs> half an hour, which is typical. Uh, we mentioned gas prices uh, last week, and here we go again. They're going up again. $2 a gallon for the first time in a while here in Bear County. $2.11 is a statewide average, two thirty seven a national average, more demand, and the economy might be improving. That might be accounting for that, according to AAA Texas. And here's I-10 at Crossroads. You can see travel uh, starting to build up, as does I-10 at Callahan. People getting out and about. But again, guys, uh, things look relatively okay. And that little steep peak of that sunrise, Mike Coaster, hey? Mm -hmm. yeah, great. Beautiful. Yeah, great all weekend long. So get out. Enjoy it if you can. Maybe a little trip to the zoo. Oh, cool picture there's from Yvonne. Yeah, there's yeah. the flamingos enjoying it. It's going to be a fantastic day for it. Just beautiful out there. If you haven't been to the zoo in a while, go check it out. They've made a whole bunch of improvements. And speaking of sunrise, yep, there's a Venus right smack in the middle and just fantastic out there. Uh, wind chill temperatures. We've got a, a decent breeze right now, so it feels like 40 here in town. Now, the actual temperatures are down in the 20s. There's not as much of a breeze out in the hill country as of right now. And speaking of wind, there is a, uh, well, as you can see, about uh, 10, maybe 15 miles per hour uh, in and around the area. And then the wind is going to be picking up today. And there's a wind advisory that is in effect up until 6 o'clock. Basically, it may be kind of on the fringes of our viewing area, well off to the east, but basically in the uh, east and northeastern portion of the states. But elsewhere, the wind is going to be still very strong. So, you might want to hang on to your hat today. Now, nothing upstairs in the atmosphere as far as any real moisture, so we're going to have a lot of beautiful blue skies today, and obviously we don't have any clouds around here. Front that moved through yesterday, preceding that front, of course, we had the wind out of the southwest, and that's what uh, you get that downsloping wind. It compresses, and that's what really heats us up. So yesterday was the anomaly, and it was all thanks to uh, this big low spinning around there, right around uh, Iowa, Wisconsin. That's what then pulled the front through, pulled in some drier air. Obviously, it was still breezy in behind that. So what it's going to do is just kind of put us back down to where we should be basically today. I'm going for 60 for a high temperature. So that huge low is sitting there over the Great Lakes. It's going to eventually work its way off to the northeast. We still keep kind of a northwesterly flow over the weekend, so that's going to provide beautiful week, beautiful weather all weekend long in through Sunday and Monday. We will start to see, um, you know, one or two extra clouds here and there. And then as we get into the 
middle part of next week really start to get a big shift here. More of a southwesterly flow, a lot more moisture, milder temperatures, more clouds, and also those rain chances will start to move in here by Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe uh, lingering into Thursday of next week. And like I said, milder temperatures today, 55 at noon. Good looking day, lots of sunshine. Wind though is going to definitely be picking up out of the uh, northwest, about 15, 25 miles per hour gusting. And but very pretty. If you're in the shadows, you might want to keep a jacket handy today. Tomorrow, cool start. Nice afternoon. Same thing Sunday, Monday. We'll uh, creep upward a little bit with temperatures through the weekend. Not anything too extreme. And then the rain chances Tuesday and Wednesday and much, much milder with that humidity. It's obviously going to hold low temperatures up much, much milder middle of next week. Yeah, feeling a little bit like spring for a couple days. Kind of, sort of, yeah. But definitely not like summer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thank you. We'll hold off on that. Yeah. 650 right now, 46 degrees. And the Selena movie, the Max Selena makeup line, a Netflix series. Even 25 years after her death, we still can't get enough of Selena. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we hear from the creator and host of a Selena podcast. Outside with a live cam, there is your Friday morning sunrise. The news you need to know before you go is straight ahead. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, President-elect Biden revealing his massive new coronavirus rescue plan. What's in it? Is it going to help? Also, the clock ticking down to President Trump's historic second impeachment trial. And then more than 20,000 National Guard troops are descending on our nation's capital, all ahead of the potential violence around Inauguration Day. Our political team is standing by with more on all of that right here on GMA. WellMed has announced 9,000 COVID-19 vaccination slots will be available this weekend. Those who can get one are healthcare workers, anyone 65 and older, and adults 18 and older with chronic health conditions. Hotline is scheduled. A slot for the south and west side locations will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily or until appointments are filled. The toll-free toll number, toll number to call on your screen is 833-968-1747. Four, five. And we want to invite you to join us for our virtual mental health town hall. We will have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and how to live with it. It's all on Wednesday, January 27th. You can find more information at ksetcommunity.com. Now to Samuel King and an update on our traffic. Uh, Mark and Stephanie, that accident that was up in uh, just south of New Braunfels on 35 has cleared right now. Uh, we still have the report of this stalled vehicle on 410, but not really impacting travel times too much. 12 minutes each way between 35 and 37. And taking a look at travel times in across the region, if you're heading in from New Braunfels, 27 minutes on 35, 29 minutes into downtown from Seguin, 24 minutes from Bernie. And here's Trans Guide, 35 at Thousand Oaks, looking fine this morning, Mike. Grab your sunglasses, grab a coat, beautiful start, to, and there's the planet Venus once again. Boy, that's a pretty picture, and it's going to be great all day long. Really cold in the hill country, not quite as cold uh, here in town, but still jacket weather and pretty much keep one all day long. Windy and 60 later on today, and overall a very nice-looking weekend. Thank you, Mike. Have a great weekend, guys. See you back here at 9.